Full frame cameras are great, but why do I use APS-C cameras too? The answer is simple. But first, if you're new here, I'm Peter and I make videos about photography and videography. You can find reviews and a lot of test footage in my channel to help you to pick the correct gear. I put so much time and effort to make these videos for you, so if you like it, subscribe to my channel. And I really appreciate it. In this video, I don't go that nerdy way. I will tell my opinion why do I use my APS-C camera, which is the A6400. Lenses First of all, the APS-C lenses are so much lighter and smaller. It wouldn't break my arm if I have to carry it all day long. Because usually when I shoot, I shoot all day. The crop sensor has a lot of benefits, which is not possible on full frame cameras. For example, there is my Sony 18-105 f4 OSS lens. This lens is very popular. The 18-105mm is around 27-157mm on full frame, which is very good. You can go from pretty wide to extreme close-ups. And you also get optical stabilization, which is very good if you use long focal length. The OSS can save your butt if you shoot on 150mm. You can really feel the shakiness without the OSS. And the size is the same as a coke bottle. You can say that lens is not the sharpest, and you're right, but the focal length coverage is very unique. In Sony full frame, there is no lens with this versatility, which also has optical stabilization. There are a lot of good lenses, like the 7200 with OSS, but it starts at 70mm. It means you almost start with the portrait focal length, which is very limited. Or there are mid range zooms like the 24-70mm or the 24-105 OSS. But a lot of cases, those aren't telephoto enough. There is one full frame lens which has kinda same focal length. And that's the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 2.8 variable aperture lens. But it doesn't have optical stabilization and it's not wide enough on the wider end. 35mm can be very limited when you make establishing wide shots. And don't forget the weight, this lens is more than 1100 gram. <laughs> My Sigma 24-70mm is around 800g and sometimes I felt it too heavy. Now you can imagine a day with the 35 and 150. I think it's not that fun on all day run and gun shootings. And it's expensive. You can buy almost for 18-105 for the cost of this one Tamron. But I don't want to misunderstand me. The Tamron is a revolutionary lens. And it's a very good full frame lens. So there are a lot of benefits when you go with the crop sensor. Manufacturers can pick lenses that match focal length coverage with compact form factor with OSS for full frame. You have to sacrifice something. You can get great coverage, but the lens will be a biceps destroyer. But if you're strong like Peter Lindgren, you'll be fine. I think the lens lineup are pretty good nowadays for the Sony APS-C. There are a lot of primes and zooms and you can pick that which is perfect for your needs. And it has a lot of third-party lenses which makes the lineup more saturated. And in a lot of cases, those are cheaper than the native lenses, which is great. And we are in my next point, the price. The price of the APS-C cameras and lenses are more affordable than full frame, which is very important if you have just started. Guys, I feel poor every time when I have to buy something. So money is a huge factor. So instead of buying a full frame camera and lenses, you can invest to an APS-C system and you can save a lot of money for something else like gimbal, microphones, drones, lights and overall those are worth more in my opinion than one full frame camera. For beginners I think it's a great opportunity to jump into the APS-C world. And if you need very specific features, you can buy a full frame camera later and you can enjoy and love that specific thing because you know the differences and you can't appreciate that much if you don't have the basis for the comparison. Next point. Image quality. The APS-C image quality is good enough. Let's be honest. Most of us make pictures for sharing on social media. A lot of times you don't need that resolution because the social media platforms will compress it down. Most of the time you can't see the differences between a picture taken by a full frame or an APS-C camera. Let me show you. Tell me which is the full frame and which is the APS-C. 
you can guess but you can only tell the differences if you see the two pictures side by side and pixel peeping. But keep in mind, I watch it on my 4K monitor and people will watch Instagram from their phone. You can do amazing things even with your phone. The story behind your pictures what is really matters and the feeling what you can achieve with composing and color grading. And I've never thinking like this, oh shit, I wish I made this picture with a full frame camera. And yeah, maybe there is a level where these little resolution things are important, but if you can achieve almost the same results, easier with less gear, I would go for it. You don't have to buy a Porsche just for go to school every day. A classic car can do the job and it's more comfortable. And the reverse is also true. You wouldn't go to a race with a classic car. Overall. APS-C is a great starting point for beginners, who just want to jump in into the camera world. You can get cheap lenses, which has great image quality or versatility, and often comes with OSS. It's compact, so it's good for traveling, blogging, run and gun shooting, or all day usage. And the overall price and value is very good. And if you're an advanced photographer or videographer, the APS-C can be a very good B camera. I love my A6400 and my APS-C system, and I can't recommend enough. What do you think? Would you pick an APS-C camera or not? Leave the comment below. And that's all for today. Anyway, my Lightroom presets are finally here. So if you like my color grade and you would like to support me, you can buy it through the link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next one. Peace.